Hello everyone, it's Gladius. Today we're talking more about phase two, things we can prep for it, what we can do ahead of time to make sure we're ready as soon as it drops. Now this is a pretty widely covered topic because everybody's excited about getting their hands on the new things when the level cap increases up to level 40. First thing you gotta do is get to level 40. So our thoughts go right away to thinking about exactly what we can do to net XP as soon as the level cap is raised. Now here's a really good one to think about. Now while you can't gain experience points right now, you can still work towards completing quests before the cap even raises. That means you can fill your entire quest log with a bunch of new quests from ranges of level 25 to 27 in that whole area. Because at this point, you're a lot stronger than you were when you first hit level 25. If you've been doing the raid or any kind of dungeons at max level for any given amount of time, you're very strong for your level. So you're able to do some of those more difficult quests. As long as you can pick them up, you can probably do it. And if not by yourself, then if, of course, if you grab a friend or two, you'll be able to do it. Now, you may be concerned because you're thinking, if I if I do these quests now, then I'm not going to benefit from the killing experience. Now, while that's a completely valid concern, Agrin, or one of the developers on the season of Discovery, did mention that they're going to be giving us other opportunities, other options for getting experience. They haven't defined exactly what this is. They haven't let us know exactly what this is, but there's been hints around possibly some adjustment or changes to the, the supply and logistics. That's a lot of people, have, there's been a lot of speculation that maybe Maybe those uh, XP increases will go up, which leads me to my second side consideration. Right now, there's not like a big massive reward for going higher than getting the initial rewards and runes from your supply and logistics. So I wouldn't be too concerned, first of all, about farming up a much higher reputation with them since there are no great massive rewards for really doing so. Also, while these are unique items and once you pick them up, you can't pick up another one until you fulfill the order or turn it in an empty or if you turn it in full. They did make a change a little while ago where the filled boxes are actually not unique. So you can go ahead and fill your box and then you can stack a couple in your inventory and it won't be an issue that you can shove one of these in your bank, that kind of stuff. So my thought is you might want to stack up your logistic orders with filled supply crates so that you can turn them in once the adjustments are, once the, the gate is raised and we're able to use these again, just in case uh, people are right on their speculation that perhaps our, our new avenue to XP that the developers have been talking about is going to be related to the logistics. I wouldn't stress on this one too much if you're just interested in just getting that stuff out of your inventory because like inventory space and bank space is pretty limited, of course. Uh, no, no issue. This is just kind of a uh, what if scenario and we'll have to see. Now, when it comes to determining the quests that you can do, now I found a couple of spreadsheets where the authors did a ton of work here. They found all of the quests you want to do and make sure that you're able to get 27 just based on in turning in all of those quests. The work can't be understated. The, the This is an amazing resource for us to use. I'm gonna link them both in the description. All credit goes to the authors on this. They did a wonderful job on making these resources. One is for Horde, and then the other is for Alliance specifically. Now let's fast forward. Phase two comes out and the level cap is raised, and then we just wanna go turn them all in right now, right away, right? No, actually. You wanna save those. For those of you who don't know, for about up to five or six levels above what the quest says, you're still gonna get the same amount of experience because the change comes in mainly when it changes to green. You have, you have red that gives you a little bit more experience and then green is gonna give you less experience and yellow is just gonna give you the normal amount. And that range is about five levels. Uh, between when it's going to turn to the different colors. So you may be thinking, Gladius, why are we saving them though? What else are we going to be doing to get experience? My quest log is full and I need to dump these. Well, Alliance players have this really sweet leveling area, a leveling dungeon that they can make use of from levels 25 or 22 to level 30, which is exactly right in the sweet spot of where phase two is going to start off. And you can even either hop into a five man party or you can go in solo and go into stock aids. Stock aids is going to be super useful and Alliance players, I'm super jealous. Stockades is a perfect zone and right in that sweet spot where you can solo it probably about five times an hour, which is gonna get you to that reset cap and get some pretty decent gear while you're at it. Yeah. Only if we were Alliance guys, right? Only if we were Alliance. I wish I could tell you, Horde. I wish I could tell you that, uh, all right, everyone, Alliance players are gone. Listen up. 
first thing, catch the red eye to Gromgol. Ease your way through Westfall. And we're gonna take the water pass. If you're brave enough, you can go directly through Elwyn, but they'll never expect an attack from the water. Push on through and head up into the harbor. Aim for daybreak. Usually Alliance players are still tired and snoozing from their, their deviant activities late night inside the Goldshire Inn. Push through this path here. Follow me, step by step. Make sure before heading into the city streets, either carry your cat or put it on passive. Make sure it's not gonna get into any trouble. Push through the city streets and ease your way over to this point here, right here on your map. Waterways are your friend. Stormwind guards never look under there. Any orky lives are lost on the way. Just go ahead and ghost hop your way and eventually you'll get to the stockades. Here, my friends, here in prison, we find freedom. And this is where we shall stay and farm. In all seriousness, you could the footage generator was for fun. It's not going to go as smoothly. Well, there is one way that is as smooth, but it's a little uh, questionable on ethically, I guess. I, I don't really know the right word for it, but we'll get into it in just a second. And then the other method is just so brute force and it takes forever. And this is the method I actually used for the video here. You just you die, you corpse run, you die, you corpse run, you die, you corpse run. Eventually you get into the canals and get to swim for just a little bit. Luckily, if you get lucky enough not to get caught and then you die and then you corpse run. And the corpse run is not short. It, it's going to take you all the way over to um, I don't remember the graveyard, but Alliance players is over next to where you get the red shirt quest way over there. You have to run the entire way because the, you don't get access to the other spirit healers as horde. Now, the thing is, you might be thinking, like, why don't I just go ahead and, and res at the spirit healer right next to uh, stockades? Well, you can't do that, which technically you can access that spirit healer. It's just going to teleport you back to the spirit healer, heal, spirit healer that you got teleported to originally when you died. So that leaves us with just respawning, running, respawning, running, respawning, running. And it just it takes a really long time since it's such a long walk. Now, what about that other, uh, you know, devious backdoor plan? You can actually use something that's called logout skip. Well, I I'm going to say it like this. There's a couple moving parts to it. So first, there's a logout skip add on that you can get that's going to show you where you would go if you performed a logout skip. For those who don't know, a logout skip is when the server can't determine where your character is due to uh, floating in the middle of the air, uh, it's going to just go ahead and send you to the nearest graveyard because it can't determine where to put your character. Now, that can happen if you are in a cave or in some kind of structure where there's terrain above you. You can stand on something and then the, the game, when it loads the, the world, it's not going to load in all of the fixtures. So if you're standing on like a barrel, if you're standing on uh, like one of those shredder machines, Machines, like anything, like any kind of structure that's not a part of the actual terrain inside of a cave, then it's just going to send you over, like when you log out and log back in, it's just going to send you to one of those graveyards. And this can result in a pretty far teleport. So on our logout skip add-on, and I'll put a link in the description. So if we're swimming behind Stormwind, it's going to say the uh, Wizard Tower graveyard for most of it. And then eventually, once you get to this point, it's going to start saying stockades. And at that point, we know if we were able to perform a logout skip there, that we could teleport ourselves into Stormwind. Now, logout skips have been pretty widely used by the hardcore community a lot. Like in, in hardcore, this is a very popular way of of getting around some more dangerous places. Like there are horde players that are in fact going into uh, stockades on their hardcore characters, which is still pretty brave. And the only way to do it is if you're able to do a logout skip in this area. Only difficulty here is, is that you're not a able to actually do a logout skip because there's no cave in this area over here. But there was another method that was found by a player on Reddit. Now, I'm going to treat this as the jumping off point. This method to me didn't pass the nose test. I it just it felt a little exploity to me. And it was my decision not to go forward with this. You're a grown ass man. You make your own decisions on if you want to do this method or not. Maybe I'm a little bit of a goody two shoes, but I don't think I'll be using this method. I couldn't find any blue post or, or any kind of endorsement from Blizzard supporting this. If I'm just going to hip fire speculation on this, I would say that I don't think it's Blizzard's intention to hard block 
any horde player from getting into stockades. And this may be a nuanced opinion, but I, I do think that it is is not game breaking because it's just accessing an instance that's freely accessed by alliance players and accessing this doesn't really hurt anybody else's gameplay. But it is using a an external uh, resource that Blizzard has specifically for unsticking characters. I don't know where the line is, but feel free to speculate wildly in the comment section on if this is considered a game exploit or not. Otherwise, if you're like me, we're doing the corpse run. We're just dragging our bloody beaten corpse into the stockades so we can get a little bit of our grind on. Probably stay here uh, up until level 30. There's no really I real issue with it. Uh, a hunter problem specifically I'm thinking about is that I'm going to have to get ammunition every so often because there's quite a number of shots I'm shooting inside of that, that prison. So, And it's not like we can just step outside and go buy some more. So... As a hunter, I'm going to be giving this strategy a good shake, especially when it comes out, because I definitely want to take advantage of that that perfect, pristine level bracket of 22 to 30. And also the density in there is pretty nice. There's a lot of things you're able to kill. Gold income is going to be not too bad either. But I'm going to talk more about specifics on, on how to get through the dungeon and the soloing strategies available once we have phase two actually out. You never know. We might get access to a really badass rune right at the start. So keep an eye out for that. If you're interested in doing this strategy, I'm going to be releasing a video firming out the details of when we should step in, how we should go about stepping into the stockades and grinding it out. But if you're interested in starting to experiment, get in there and start working on a solo farm. Yeah, you can work your way over there. Let me know if you find anything cool. Now, I wanted to finish up with one more thing. Players that are really worried about having enough gold for their mount, especially at level 40, uh, just be a little bit at ease. The prices for the mounts are definitely decreased. Earlier with Season of Mastery, there was an adjustment to prices on mounts. And now we're going to benefit that as what we're going to benefit from that as well in Season of Discovery. Around 36 gold is going to be the price of the actual mount itself and then 10 gold for the, the writing training. So not bad, not bad. Definitely affordable. Um, something we definitely want to save up for because mounts are going to be a huge thing for level 40. But I predict that we'll be able to afford it even if we're not super money conscious while we're leveling, especially with any money that we've backlogged now that we've been at level 25 for a little while. So I don't think uh, we're going to have a major hang up with picking up our mount and getting our mount right at level 40. But hey, you can't guarantee anything with Season Discovery. Things are moving and changing so quickly. We'll see what happens. Let me know in the comment section below, are you hyped for Season of Discovery Phase 2? Uh, what classes are you taking with you into Phase 2? Was it the same class as Phase 1, or did you find something else that sounds really cool? For all things Phase 2, a Season of Discovery, and Warcraft, I'm going to have videos coming out, more about details as we find them as they come up, and some other ideas for things we can do uh, with just the information that's available to us now. And if the video did help you out today, please heroic strike that like button. If you want to stay tuned for more WoW content in the future, please bash the subscribe. I appreciate your time. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everyone.